off thumbnail is literally epic. Um, welcome back to our Monday Night Lives. Man, I'm getting a little bushy up here. It's time for a haircut this week. Um, shout out to you guys, everyone that's been waiting, joining in, much love and appreciations, um, to you guys. Uh, Killer Kush, thank you, man, appreciate the support. Uh, Justin, what's up, man? Man, Aaron, what's good, bro? How's everyone doing, man? Uh, excited for another story time. You know, every Monday night, I got my little prison story times going. Excited to get into that catch up with everyone, do a little Q&A action, uh, see what's going on with everyone. Oh, I just got the notification on my email, I'm going live. <laughs> uh, good old technology, right? Grab a sip of water. Yeah, I got a epic story for you guys. Uh, excited to jump into the inner workings of cell phones in federal prison. Jonathan, what's up, man? Welcome to the live. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Remember, every Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern, we go live. Dominic, what's up, man? Guys, office is coming together. Let me show you this. I keep filling it up. It is uh, coming together. Pretty cool. It's like a really cool working space. It's fucking editing a podcast right now. We had uh, Gianni from uh, Power, the Power TV show. Shout out to 50 Cent. Shout out to uh, Gianni Paolo, Power Stars, all of them. Uh, he was at when I was in um, Spotify Studios. Uh, that was a really a blast, a fun time. Um. But what's up, everyone? Karina, how are you? Jonathan, how are you? Uh, Duran, what's up? Uh, Danbury Trashers, I'll show you guys. I got them out here. COE Braun in the house. Jay, what's up? Zero Tark, Tony, what's up, man? Uh, trashers gears right there. Shout out to the Trashers. Look at that. Ooh, look at that, baby. This is a studio for, for those who haven't seen it. You gotta love when, you know, people just leave shit over here. Look at this fucking shit. Fucking... Oh, also, guys, I found this water right here for nine bucks. You could get this shit nine dollars on Amazon. Free shipping. Oh, and also these waters are fire. Try these out. But yeah, I ordered all these cases because they're only nine bucks. Uh, got our little snack selection over here. Got to have the fudge strips. Uh, yeah, this is the studio. You got it. That's where I record all the magic in there. We got this little uh, travel um, case over here because I'm going to Nashville next month. Going to shoot some episodes. We got the Chevy Chase jersey. Check this out. Oh, this is more damn very trasher stuff right here too. Um, this is the wall. When guests come, wall of thumbnails right here. Whenever we have a guest at the studio, and there's Amesbury. Shout out to Amesbury. Um, but yeah, all right, cool. Story time tonight. We're talking about cell phones in federal prison. Oh, also, these chips are fire. These pop chips, sour cream and onion, salt and pepper, this and that. Um, they don't pay me to advertise that. I bought those on my own, uh, but they're really good. Yeah, shout out to Diamond Ants. You guys got to check out the um, the Talking Trash podcast. Um, it's really good. Definitely really good. All right, so let's get into tonight's episode. Um, let's see here. Tonight we're talking about cell phones in prison. Um, and then we'll do some, uh, some questions, some Q and A and whatnot. Stick this down right here. So when I was at the Fort Dix low security federal prison, um, I remember the very first time I saw a cell phone, I was like walking through the halls and like guys were like really sneakily, like putting up 
uh, sheets to like kind of cover themselves. And I walked into a room and all of a sudden I looked the right and a guy's on a phone, literally like a, a cell phone, a contraband cell phone. I'm like, holy shit, there's cell phones in here. So then I soon found out that you could actually rent cell phone time. So I started renting. Um, you would use prison currency at Fort Dix. It was mackerels um, and then books of stamps. You would pay like 15 mackerels or say two books of stamps to rent the phone for a half hour. And you would give them to the guy. A lot of the Spanish guys ran the phones, the, the contraband phones. It was never iPhones because iPhones were hard to charge. Um, and they would give you the, it was a Boost Mobile phone plan because Boost Mobile wasn't traceable to anyone, um, to any, uh, you could use a random name, this and that. And then um, Boost Mobile um, would be the phone plan. And mackerels were worth a dollar. So anyways, the Spanish guys or whoever had the phone, mo most cases it was Spanish, would give you the phone and they would kind of keep guard in the hallway. And um, while you're just using the phone, and I remember going on Facebook from federal prison, I was doing all this stuff and they would have lookouts at each end of the staircase because there was two staircases and they would yell, Bahando! When the cops were coming and then the Spanish guy would run in, grab the phone from you, put it in a, in a pouch in his pants and run the hell out of there. And then when the coast was clear, they would bring it back to you. So these lookouts, like when the cops would come, the security guards, because there was one per unit of like 400 people, they would um, they would just run one down one staircase while the cops are coming up the other. It was literally crazy how this is going on. And then I kind of learned about how they would charge the phones. They would never keep the phone charging with the battery. The batteries would pop out. It's not like an iPhone. It's like Samsung phones, LGs and stuff. They would pop out and they would charge them in the lights, um, like in lights like these up here. Um, and they would turn off the fans. They would charge them in the lights, the fans. They had these little connector pieces that they would make. It was very fascinating, the technology that went into this stuff. Very, very fascinating. Um, and some guys would make thousands of dollars renting phones. Now let's talk about actually buying a phone in federal prison. So it, it's all supply and demand. So depending on what security prison you're at, the more expensive it's going to be. Uh, when I was at a camp, I'd get a phone for a couple hundred bucks because it's so easy to get. But at the low... Guys were paying minimum, minimum $2,000, not for an iPhone. No, we're talking about these guys, these guards or wherever they got them from, they would most of the time come in through the guards or they would get thrown over the fence or the campers next door. These phones were $50 Boost Mobile phones that were selling on the prison compound for minimum $2,000. Isn't that insane? Like the profit margin is insane. So guys would get in 10, 15 phones at a time, s s um, sell them out. Uh, you would do it Western Union. You would give whoever's buying it a, a Western Union number, and you would just have to hope they give you the phone. Uh, some guys, if you if you were known on the compound or you had good street cred, you, they would give you the phone, and then you would have some time to Western Union it. But most of the time, they don't want to give you the phone first because there would be times like, this is crazy. There would literally be times you would see a guy buy a phone, like a new guy comes on the block, he's like, oh, I want a phone, he's got money, his peoples would send it to him, and then an hour later, he gets popped by the guards because he doesn't know how to move around. It's a lot of responsibility having a, fed, uh, having a contraband cell phone in federal prison. So... It, it gets dicey and you got to learn how to move with it, learn how to carry it. And, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. There's situations where a guy would buy a phone and I'm telling you, the person that sold it to him probably snitched him out and told him where it was. And guys are so quick to buy these phones and, and not uh, have any idea for hiding spots or this and that. Um, so they would get popped. And then there was one time I saw a guy buy two phones in one day. This man lost four thousand dollars on two phones maybe even more if he paid more than two thousand dollars legit insane craziest shit i i had ever seen it, it, it's wild um and so guys would hide these phones they would most of the time you would see these phones in magnets like they would have magnets uh glued onto the back so they could easily stick it under a washing machine stick it in the air ducts hide it around because you never want to get caught with a phone um, if it gets caught on you or in your area, um, you're going to the hole and you're getting shipped to a higher security prison. The idea is never get caught with it. 
throw it into a common area um, so you don't get in trouble for it if you were to get caught. Never get caught with it on your persons. Um, but yeah, can you believe two to three thousand dollars a phone? Like, <laughs> imagine. Um, so eventually, I end up buying a phone. And I get a good deal. I was like 1800 bucks. I paid for a phone. There was a lot of phones running around. I was able to get one. And my dad sent the money to the person that had it. Um, and, you know, I had like this little sewed on pouch um, that would go in like your groin area. That was like a, a, a picture of like a leather phone case sewed onto your pants. And so you would just stick it right there because ideally the guards aren't searching right in your crotch area. Now, if they have the wand, like the electronic wand, because they would sometimes run around with that, then you are in trouble. Because if they're wanding you, your ass is grass. They're getting you real quick on that. Um, so I bought my first phone, and uh, I end up, I, I lived to, 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 to fight another day. I ended up selling that one before it got tough because uh, it was getting very hot. Um, they were doing a lot of raids. Everyone, when you have a phone, everyone's snitching on you because there's so many guys that don't have a phone. Um, so they're jealous and they're throwing you under and no one wants the new kid on the block to have a phone. Um, so that's what happened. And uh, you'd see some pretty crazy stuff. And so when I get to the camp, I get a phone again. <laughs> And those phones were so cheap, they're only 200 bucks because it was so easy to get them in. You lose a phone, you guys were just chucking them down the hallway whenever there was a cop coming because there's no fence at the camp. It's so easy to just get another one. Um, so you just that's more of a reasonably priced phone. So the markups aren't as bad. And in those cases, guys aren't charging them in the lights or anything. They're just plugging them into the outlets because it's so relaxed at the camp. Sometimes guards would walk past a phone and, and they don't even take it. It's nuts. Uh, Jonathan, you're a real one for, for buying your friend a phone. Shout out to you for that. Um, so anyways, yeah, this phone ecosystem. So what guys would do is they would tell their peoples, they would call on someone else's phone to, to say, hey, to their family members or so-and-so, um, buy me the Boost Mobile card, like one of those prepaid Boost Mobile cards, and then you would make a fake account using, you know, a random a Gmail account and some fake names and stuff, and you would have a phone plan. You could get unlimited minutes and unlimited text and unlimited data for only like 50 or 60 bucks a month. Literally crazy. Um, and that's what guys would do in federal prison. It's, it, it's so fascinating, the, the, uh, the economy um, behind it, the ecosystem, just everything. Yeah, this shit right here, zero calorie splash, pineapple mango, really good. Um, and, and iPhones were hard to come by in these places too. Um, iPhones are not really a thing um, in federal prison because they are so hard to, um, to charge. There's no battery pack in an iPhone, so it's hard. You can't separate it. So no one wants to leave. One, if you did have an iPhone, you were paying five or six grand for that thing in prison. Uh, but no one wants just to, le to, to just leave the iPhone randomly out and about. Uh, Chevy Chase is the iconic actor. You guys don't know who Chevy Chase is? Um, literally the, the National Lampoon Christmas Vacation movies, everything like that. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they sell those those cards everywhere too. But yeah, guys, let's get into some questions. Remember to hit that like button if you're looking at this in vertical mode. Hit those three dots. Um, if you guys have any questions about the phone thing or questions in general, remember Locked In Podcast, three episodes a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday night, 7 p.m. Uh, tomorrow's episode, man, it's a killer. We got someone that was in an Ecuadorian prison for seven years going to be insane really excited to share about that um yeah uh, there was a lot of people that rented phones in prison a lot of people i mean guys would so think about it when you pay for a phone that's two or three thousand dollars yes it's a lot of money but if you don't get caught with that phone and, and granted eventually everyone gets caught but you'll have a good run if you're smart and you play it well if you don't get caught you're making a lot of money if a half hour sells for 15 or 30 bucks, 
and you're booking it for eight hour window, say some guys will just pay. I had a bunk mate that would just pay like 400 bucks up front to some people at, at different times. Um, and it was just, it was insane how much money these guys are making. I remember when I went, when I eventually got rid of the phone, cause I was like, yeah, this shit's too risky. Why the fuck am I doing this? I ended up just renting and I would pay monthly because it's less risk, but there's no risk really to rent because there's always a lookout because no guy wants his phone jacked, even though it always sucked when guys would rent a phone, they did a random raid and the person that was the renter gets popped with it. So the guy that rented it, that person is screwed out of a phone, plus the guy that was the rentee ends up going to the hole. Uh, Brian, thank you, man. Shout out to you. I appreciate it. Oh, Dominic, the water. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I just got put on to uh, the water by one of my clients. It's really good. Um, Garrett, yes, a lot of people did take pictures and videos on their contraband cell phones. And the the um, the prison would always sell send the phones out to the FBI to like break into them and crack them or whatever. And that's how people got caught. They had pictures of each other. I mean, have you seen like prison talk on TikTok and everything like that? Um the, there's guys going live from prison <laughs> and they're taking photos. They're doing all this crazy shit. That's how these guys go down and get caught. Like the, the, I remember the prison guards, what they would do is they'd crack into these phones. Some idiots didn't even have a password protected, but they'd get into these phones and all they do is look at the contacts and look at, they would compare the numbers to see if it matches your call log from the normal phone to see if you, you had anything on there. And then they would um, also check to see if um, you had any photos and they're just comparing it and guys would get popped all the time. Sometimes they would catch a phone in a random co uh, communal space and then a couple weeks later, that person would get called down um, to the next one. It, it, would, it would be so funny, you know? Um, and then the, the, it, it, they, would, they would get called to the next one. Big ass booger on the right side. That's not a booger. That's just like my skin. Got me looking for a booger. No, I don't have any boogers. That was just like my skin right there. It looks like a booger. Um, but yeah, so then um, they would get called down by the SIS or the Special Investigations Division, and they would say, hey, we caught you on a phone, and, and that guy would, you know, go the shoe um, from photos or this and that. Nuts. Uh, a lot of fights, not really a lot of fights. See, the thing in these low security prisons and camps, no one wants to get into a fight because no one wants to get kicked out of there. You know, they don't want to do anything that's going to get them in trouble. Uh, Jonathan, thank you, man. Um, I don't know which jail off the top of my head, um, uh, like a, the actual name of it, but that episode comes out tomorrow at 7 p.m. I interviewed someone that spent seven years, an American drug smuggler that gets caught in Ecuador insane episode um pugonomics yes i did have to sit at the chomo table they made me sit at the chomo table um but yeah tomorrow night's episode is going to be insane tune in 7 p.m uh it's really going to be good um rocky no uh people were used to doing that to beat off i would rent a cell phone to watch it you know um, and you would just take it into the stall and guys would just like put a little something over the stall to make sure, um, that, you know, no one was walking in or anything like that. Um, like, uh, it was going to peek over, but guards, what they would do is they take a little mirror and go underneath it. That's how they always popped guys in this, in the, um, in the bathroom. Cause they would walk into the bathroom and they would look under each stall and uh, see who's on a phone. And they would hold their keys so they don't jingle and they're walking right in and or they're peeking over the stall. A lot of guys got popped um, because they had their cell phones in the bathroom. But I personally would always go in the bathroom because there's nowhere else to go. So you bring that joint in there and you do what you got to do and you take the risk, you know? I was not locked up with JD. Heart and lover, what's up? Um, guys, remember to follow me on my Instagram. If you want to communicate, you want to talk, you want to chat, just keep up with things. Follow me on Instagram at Ian underscore Bic um, and, and check that out. Um, Jonathan, I appreciate you, man. It means a lot. Conditions at Wyatt it kind of suck, man. It's a holdover detention facility. You're at lockdown a lot. Um, the one good thing that they had at the time were like the commissary bags. You could buy like these special bags with different like name brand chips and stuff, which was cool. And on Thursdays, you can order out to eat 
which was fun. Um, that, that was pretty cool. Uh, Amber Alert. Yeah, that's actually a running joke that when an Amber Alert went off in prison, everyone's phones would just light up. There was like a, a nationwide security test or something a couple months ago, and I made a TikTok about it that everyone um, um, was shot on it. Karina, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, it means a lot. You know, we're grinding. We're pushing this podcast episode, three episodes a week. Check out my episode with Gianni Paolo from Power. That came out last night. Uh, leave a comment. Leave a like. Um, Misty, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, it means a lot. I appreciate all the support, guys. Um, <laughs> the, the OF. Guys, I used to have an OF page. I might have to get... Should, should I make that again? It was pretty funny. Now I actually have a huge platform. I don't know if I get into that or not. Um, collect calls. So there's no text, or at least at my thing. There are text programs, but um, there was emails. Um, and they do charge you, and that could be expensive. And you only get like 400 minutes a month, I think more over the holidays, or it's 300, and then you get another 100 over the holidays. I don't know, but the, the phone prices are outrageous. I think 15 minutes was like three or four bucks, something crazy. Um, what else we got? Kelvin, uh, I just answered that. Yeah, G Gianni is the best man. Really sweet dude. Um, yes, I was uh, in the box. I did six months in the box. G Martin, thank you so much, man. I love seeing that. Guys, if you can do me a favor... Everyone always asks, what's the, how can we support? I don't need money. I don't want anything financial from you guys. This is all I need you to do, okay? This is super important. Check out app, my show on Apple or Spotify, Locked In with Ian Bick, and just leave a review. It helps push the show out tremendously on the audio platform and get more listeners. That's all I need you to do. Just check out Locked In with Ian Bick on Spotify or Apple or both if you're feeling gracious, and just leave me that review. Um, on Spotify, you can't write anything. You can just rate it. Um, but on Apple, you can actually write something. Uh, Bearded, I think three episodes a week is the max. Um, I do. I have a studio business. I have clients that I edit and this and that. Um, and I don't want to overwhelm people. I think three people uh, is, is, is more than enough. And also on Spotify, make sure you hit the follow button too. Uh, that would be a great, greatly appreciated, uh, Oscar Castro, shout out to you, man. I was just telling the whole live that your episode comes out tomorrow night, uh, 7 PM, seven years in an Ecuadorian prison. Um, Abdu, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but I have done an episode with the connect. I I've had Johnny Mitchell on my show twice and I was on his show. Um, <laughs> glasses with baby goo. Y'all are wild. Tom, shout out to you. Thank you. Conservative felon. Thank you. Um, there was no iPods in the feds at the time. I don't know if that's different now, but I know a lot of the state guys have, uh, iPads. My first episode was last year with Jesse Crossan. He goes by the name Second Chancer. Uh, great episode. I've had him twice, uh, on the show. T.Y., what's up? Sorry, I just sent a quick text. Someone just sent me this article. This was in the Danbury News Times paper um, today. Um, check it out. It's actually pretty good. They did a really good uh, job on it. Search Ian Bick Danbury's News Times. Um, it actually came out really good, guys. Give it a read. Um, I, I was really surprised. Jordan, thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Yeah, it's front page of the Danbury News Times. Finally, they gave me a good one. Uh, shout out to Kendra Baker um, for writing that. G. Martin, yeah, I signed a, a three-year lease with my um, studio, 
where, you know, we do all the editing, my recording studio, and I like the area, you know. It's, uh, it's a good place to live, and it's close to New York City, and I could travel to wherever I need to go to and, and whatnot. And, you know, it's homey. Like, look at I got this, like, I was showing everyone earlier. This is my office. Like, it's a really cool, like, creative workspace. I love it. Shout out to Mike Tyson, man. That guy is the GOAT. Oh, I went to Christina P. last night uh, at the Richfield Playhouse. Tom Secura's um, um, wife. Really great show. She was super funny. Yeah, Dominic, it's literally crazy. The News Times bashed me for years, and they they, they did me right. Um, very appreciative about that. Your local star shine. Hi, how are you? Uh, yeah, I, I got two sleeves, guys. I got two tattoo sleeves. I got some on my chest um, and all that. Uh, Jonathan, I, I think I have like six or seven podcasts right now. We edit for the Mean Girls. Uh, this is the worst. Brittany Furlan. Uh, Furlan. Um, we have, um, what else? We do a lot. I do the jo uh, Johnny Mitchell's clips on TikTok, help him with his clips. Um, things are grinding, you know, we're coming together. It's, it's, it's really exciting to see it. We've come a long way. And, and remember every Monday we do these lives every Monday, 7 PM Eastern time. You guys want to come on here. You want to chat, you want to hang out from seven to seven 30 every Monday. Uh, it's me and you time. You know, I take the time to, to connect with you guys because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. Also, check out the merch, Locked In Hoodies. If you go to ianvic.com and use promo code Locked In, um, you know, um, you get 20% off. Yeah, you have to hustle in this day and age. You got to. I've, I've always been a hustler. I'm not lazy. Um, and I do a lot. I edit all my own podcasts now. I do all my clips. Oh, uh, did you guys see this? Look at how cool this is. <laughs> it's literally me. Shout out to Oscar Castro, man, for making this. Look at this. Ooh. It's literally me. The little headphones and the microphone. This is literally the best gift ever. Who's cuter? Conservative felon. That, uh... That would be actually a good idea. I, you know what I'd love to do? Put a felt uh, put a um, a um, billboard in Danbury. <laughs> really stir some feathers up. <laughs> Danbury's a weird town, man. So people are got a grudge about that. Um, bearded? No, I've never gotten any threats and stuff. Some people will call me a snitch or whatever. I'm like everything I'm talking about. All these prison guards already know uh, uh, what's going on in there. It's, they weren't born yesterday. It's crazy. Uh, Dominic, Tyson's going to whoop Jake, man. Tyson's got to handle business. Yeah, I don't know if, I don't think billboards are, I don't think it would be that pricey in this area. 10K. Three rounds with headgear. <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm going to an event with Tyson next month. Yeah, me and uh, JD Delay are very cool. I love JD. Really good dude. Uh, Calvin, I would never take back on to prison. It gave me this amazing life I have now, an amazing job, an amazing career, and everything happens for a reason in life. Everything comes full circle. Um, I don't watch soccer, so I couldn't tell you um, who... Um, who my favorite soccer player is. My brother, my younger brother, he's 24. He loves soccer. Um, so, yeah. I don't smoke smoke, but I do edibles. I love a good edible. Tyson, man. Tyson edibles, they literally have an ear shaped on them. They're my go-to. They're the best. Highly recommend it. Um, I'm not involved in Tyson's vapes at all, but I promote for them. Um, love his stuff. Re will recommend it to everyone. So shout out to Tyson, man. Those guys are great over there. Yeah, you really can't measure return on investment. I, I feel like it's more like an ego thing to have a billboard. Like how many people are actually seeing a billboard and then following up on that? 
Um, we're working on a few big names, but guys, my channel is all about, you know, we say like any big names coming up, but like literally I think what's cool about my channel is that they're people no one's ever heard of and their stories break for the first time. So on my channel, like look at Leroy Ebron, CEO Ebron, you know, I think that is, um, it's so cool. Like that interview is almost at 300,000 views. That's not some celebrity. We're doing more views on an interview than celebrities. You know, that's why Rogan has that magic touch. You can interview anyone. So, you know, I, I just think, I think that's a fascinating part about it. Um, and that's what I'm focusing on. So we, we, we have a lot of, uh, um, interesting, you know, stories in the pipeline. JD delay is in the building the nip cutter 5000 dude have you guys ever seen jd delays nips those things can cut through steel man but my favorite interview of all time will always go to my first one with jd we broke the internet with that one um that one spectacular um yeah uh, dt wap i was reading that that's insane um literally insane Um, Ed, shoot us an email, man, or, or fill out the submission form. Uh, if you go to ianvick.com, we have a be a guest submission form. Um, and check that out. But listen, guys, uh, it was great talking to you tonight. Thanks for connecting. Um, we'll see you next Monday, 7 p.m., uh, for another Q&A and, and story time. And, uh, you know, uh, watch this live if you want that prison story about the phones. And, um, yeah, much love to you guys. Seriously, appreciate everyone that tunes in, comments, chats with us, and everything like that. And make sure you guys tune in tomorrow night's episode. Yeah, I got to leave, JD, because I got grinding to do, you know? I don't, I don't have the luxury to just hang out. Um, but, yeah, good to hear from all you guys. Stay safe. Much love. Um, and if you need anything, hit me up on Instagram, 